true survival back here. Um, I made a video of part two, and I think I'm gonna call this one part three. But um, as you can see, I just got done shoveling my walk and getting a pathway out to my truck. But uh, I just wanted to give you guys an update on the tea. Um, I've already drank a little bit, but uh, it's it's coming along nicely. Um, you know, just bed of coals, that's it, you know. If you had a bigger roaring fire, it would be a lot better. But I wanted to take this time to show you guys that uh, every time I've looked around and stuff, I've seen people on YouTube, they've, uh, you know, other survivalist channels. See them bringing out, like, new knives every week um, or flashlights. And you guys have heard my rant on this one. But I want to show you guys basically what I'm carrying today. Um, as always, I always carry my Leatherman Wave. I love this multi-tool. Uh, people are saying the signal's better. Well, guess what? I don't have the money for the signal, and I like the Leatherman Wave. And, uh, yeah, I'm sticking with the Leatherman Wave. The other thing I wanted to show you guys that a lot of people... You know, they're going to be like, oh, you you really carry that knife? Yes, I do. This knife is actually really good. have had no complaints out of this knife at all. It's the Les Stroud SK Arctic, which is kind of ironic. You know, snowing Arctic. So, yeah, corny pun joke there. Um, so, yeah, I carry this one. I love this knife. It's been used a lot, and it doesn't even look like it's been used a lot. Um, it just has that non-stick surface on there, and I've actually been thinking about stripping the painting off the blade and, you know, having it silver, but i just been lazy, and I haven't wanted to do it. So, yes, I carry this around, and the cool thing about it is that it does have, oh, it's got a uh, flip, um, <laughs> fire striker with it. So, it's a great, great knife. And that flint striker's hard to get out. So, it's got some good grippies on it. I've used it a couple times. And the reason I like it is it stands upright in the sheath other than like that Bear Grylls one. But I didn't buy this because, oh, I'm a survivalist or survival expert or survival whatever. However you want to rate it. I bought it because the knife's actually good. Um, I will actually say that the uh, there's another one that's bigger, which is the SK Mountain, and it's more aggressive. I've got it too uh, because I fell in love with the Arctic so much. Um, but the SK Mountain is more aggressive. It's got some serrated edges on the back part of it, but it comes with a lot of bells and whistles that I just find. Basically, I'm going to go get myself a leather a um, leather making kit and I'm gonna make my own sheath for it because there's no purpose for all the crap that's on that sheath right now anyway I carry that stuff in my thigh pack so I'm if, if I carry you know the thigh pack plus that knife it'd be overkill which maybe might be a good thing at some points in times you never know but I can see right now that our tea is pretty much almost done it's been boiling a little bit and um, the baggie fell off so now I gotta eat an air real quick ah uh, fast reflexes so reflexes reflexes sorry so yeah we've got our tea and what I'm gonna do is I've got a spot right down here uh, then I'm just gonna set it on top of that snow and it's gonna melt some of it but the tea is way too hot to drink. So, what do you do? Huh? Well, you could always add some snow in there. And get it to melt. Now, it took me about three or four cupfuls of snow to get this tea to half a cup. So, you can see that you're going to have some work ahead of you. But if you're sitting there 
at a campfire and stuff like that, you know, you're going to have snow around you all the time. You know, so snow is not a big, big factor in what goes on. So, let me shake this grill top off. So, basically, you're going to have to put twice as much as that you want in there. Um, yeah, I say we're about at a half a cup of tea out of four cupfuls of snow. So for a full cup, it would be eight cupfuls of snow to melt into one full cup. So it's not too bad, let's, let's try this out. Uh, pretty good. And as you can see, stainless steel, uh, that's what I told you guys to get in the beginning. You can put it right on the fire. It's not going to hurt it. I mean, it's going to blacken it a little bit, but good Lord. I can wash it off or I can leave it on there. Uh, I think somebody said one time, the blacker the stuff is, the better it does to cook, like on the outside. I don't know. I've heard it some crazy place. I'll have to look it up, but as of right now, Got the tea done, got my truck, you know, got a path out to my truck in case I need to get out. Um, it is a four-wheel drive, so I might go play a little bit later. Um, but as you can see, we have a lot of snow here, and there's a lot of people wrecking. And, okay, I where I live at, it's not too far from, you know, like, b the big part of town, as in, like, Walmart and stuff like that. Um... And people go crazy. It's like around here, it's like, oh, snow's coming, grocery store's wiped out. I've never understood that. You live in West Virginia or any places that get snow each year, learn to drive in the stuff. I mean, hell, if we was in Alaska, this ain't nothing compared. You know, this is nothing to them. This is like, oh, this is a little trinkle, you know, kind of thing. So, I mean, with that being said, be careful out there. Be smart upon everything. Just be smart about things. Make sure that you pack a nice little survival kit into your car. And I forgot to mention, you might want to put a little bit of first aid in that survival kit as well. Um, you just never know. Put, put the hot hands that I recommended to put in your pack, put that in there with your medical kit because you know your hands start freezing and stuff like that well it could become a medical condition um frostbite you know so with that being said just just be smart put yourself a little kit together um like i said before i've got a kit for myself um and it's just literally it straps onto my thigh I don't leave the house without it. In my truck, I've always got a tarp, and I've always got some sort of axe in the back. I've got a, a big toolbox in the back that I could just unlock, and, you know, there's my axe. Um, uh, tea's better than I thought. Um, you know, I keep, of course, you know, jumper cables, stuff like that. If I go out anywhere, I've got to make sure that, you know, I've got a little bit of food and water in there no no questions asked but yes I, I do keep a tarp and stuff in there i've got some firewood in the back um you know i've got baggies upon baggies of tender uh being able to uh oh looks like my camera hold on okay it just seems to me that I've got baggies upon baggies of tinder for me to be able to go and start my fire. I started my fire on that little camp stove. Um, what did I use for that? <laughs> um, no, I just used a lighter. I just put a good amount on there, put a lighter underneath it, let it catch flame, and just build it up. And what we got was good tea. So... You just oh, and if you want to clean it, you can always just put snow in it and bounce it around a little bit, you know, and just dump it out. 
which I mean I'll be going into my house here in a minute and I'll just wash it out so yeah you know keep keep things and people if you want to see about firewood this is what I'm talking about yeah it might be covered in snow and stuff but there's there's wood right here it's dried out it will burn um, I've got some in the back of the truck uh, all you need is enough to start a fire and get it nice and hot after that start chopping start collecting there's things out there in the winter trust me if there wasn't people in Alaska and stuff like Montana and everything they wouldn't survive with all the things that they have so play it smart build yourself a kit be safe out there and remember one rule I, yeah I might have a four-wheel drive and somebody that's watching this might have a Chevy Cavalier or a Prius or you know some smaller car or just a two-wheel drive truck or something like that your vehicle doesn't stop any better than any other vehicle out here when it comes to ice and snow it's all the same stopping yeah i'll have to stop my truck a little bit before you if you have a smaller car because i've got a heavier vehicle but just take your time don't be stupid and just be cautious you know there are a lot of idiots out there that won't care what anybody says they'll just go ahead and just go straight into it so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and end this video and get back in here and stay warm and stuff and i'll have these uploaded i don't know if i'll do probably do part two here in a second and then this is part three um so basically when that gets done i might i might upload this one tomorrow um just for the fact of maybe kind of like do a one a day video which is kind of hard for me to do but uh take it easy um just be safe out there get yourself a kit if you don't have one get it now and uh as always, are you paranoid or are you paranoid enough?